If you are a cancer survivor and you haven't had thoughts like this, I am amazed and I also don't believe you. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Samantha and I am a stage four breast cancer survivor. I put a poll up on my channel last night asking what you guys were interested in. When I went to sleep last night, the topic of survivor's guilt was winning by quite a lot. And so that's the video that I planned. Now, since waking up in the morning, the what chemo feels like topic is winning and I have no idea what's going to be winning by the time this video is posted. All of them are kind of moving around. Cue, please, please be quiet so we can film. Survivor's guilt is a particular kind of guilt that develops in people who have survived a life-threatening situation. Some survivors feel guilty that they survived when others died. Others believe they could have done more to save the lives of others. Cue, shh. As you can see, this applies to people in a lot of different situations, but cancer patients go through this a lot. And the reason that I know this is because I myself have felt this at times, but also because it's one of my most asked questions um, on Instagram when people message me. People feel different levels of survivor's guilt, just like people feel different levels of anxiety or depression. And my level of survivor's guilt at times has been higher, but most of the time it's relatively low. Anyone who knows me in real life and is on social media knows that I have two Instagrams. I have an Instagram that is private. I only let people follow me if they know me in real life or if they have connected with me so much online that I like consider them more of a friend than like some other random person that's online. And I have a public Instagram and that's the Instagram that I started when I started making YouTube videos and sharing my cancer story. I will say I really like the system I had with the two separate Instagram accounts and here's why. On the cancer Instagram, I followed a lot of cancer accounts. I followed people that were also sharing their story with breast cancer. A lot of the accounts that I follow on that account were friends that I made along the way from just both of us having the same kind of journey at the same time. While I was on cancer treatment, this Instagram was super helpful because I was able to see a lot of people who were going through the same thing as me or I was able to see the things that people had gone through that I was about to go through, or I was able to help other people that were just behind me on treatment or whatever. While I was on cancer treatment, I was way more active on that Instagram account. Once I stopped cancer treatment, I kind of fell off of it a little bit. I still post on it, you know, every once in a while, but not nearly as much and I wasn't as like active on reading other people's posts and liking and commenting on their posts and keeping up with all those friends that I had made. I, I really, I don't keep up with a lot of them as much anymore. And that's cause I really kind of struggled with this account once I finished active treatment. After I finished radiation, but while I was still on the targeted therapy medication and the hormone therapy medication. And the reason that it was a struggle for me was just because it was very sad to see these accounts, these updates from people that maybe weren't doing as well as I was um, finishing their treatment. Maybe they had a relapse or maybe they were struggling with their treatment and it wasn't working. And so in order for myself to like grow and heal and kind of move on from, you know, being in treatment for cancer, I kind of needed to separate myself from that Instagram account. And so I did like just stop for a long time and I would go back and forth to it. Like every once in a while I'll post something, but I really have never gotten back to the level of engagement that I had while I was on active cancer treatment. I don't really like to go on that account anymore and scroll through and see all the updates from people because I know that it might make me sad. So I stick to my private Instagram account of the people that I just know in real life. And you know, obviously, sad things happen to people that I know in real life too, but it's just on a way lower scale than just having every person on my feed be someone that is a cancer survivor, is going through treatment, you know, stuff like that. I actually tried to do the same sort of thing with my YouTube for a little while when I started posting more videos with Gray. I kind of went off of that and went back to posting more cancer content because that really wasn't the thing that was bothering me. It wasn't really bothering me at all to share my experiences, to talk about my journey, the things I went to, to reflect on it. 
and to give advice or whatever, all of the cancer related videos that I've been doing, they are still all about me, my journey specifically, and just, you know, things that I've gone through since active treatment. Reflecting on what I went through and celebrating the little achievements, um, and milestones I get to, it's kind of a positive and productive thing. So when it's all about myself and it's all about what I went to, through and I'm on the other side of it, you know, it's not hard for me to talk about those things. It is hard for me to watch someone else go through those things, those same things that I went through. And also it's hard for me to watch someone go through those things and maybe them not turn out as well as they did for me. Obviously human beings have empathy, so it's hard to watch someone else go through something that's hard. But it's also hard because it's like, well, what if this is my future? Or what if my cancer comes back and I have a reoccurrence and then I have to go through all of this again? And so it kind of places, you know, this worry, um, anxiety for myself that I can't have because it will just make me go crazy. Those things are going to stay in the back of my mind probably for the rest of my life. There's no way to get that out of your head when you've gone through something that's so life-changing and so hard. There's no way to get that completely out of your mind. It's just not going to happen. I not have to live with that, but I can not think about it every day because if I do think about it every day, it's going to make me miserable. It's not going to let me live the life that I want to live. If I'm constantly worrying that cancer is going to come back, the way that I live my life is going to be completely different. It's going to be like, oh, do I really want to buy a house? I could die in a few years. You know, I have to live my life like it's never coming back so that I can just do what I normally would do like a normal person and kind of just, you know, live like that. What I'm describing is really, really hard for some people. And it was really hard for me at certain parts throughout my journey as well. And it makes sense why it's one of the most asked questions is how do I stay positive? How do I not think about it? And and the the only answer I can really give is that you just have to not. Just like when you are diagnosed with cancer, you have to go through the treatment. I mean, you can choose not to. Um, you can choose to like, you know, play the odds kind of like I did with my medicine. But, you know, if you actively have cancer in your body, the best shot you have is to do all the treatment. It's scary. You're poisoning yourself. You're causing a ton of side effects, but you have to do it if you want to live. I mean, it's a life or death scenario right there. Um, so just like that, just how you were like, okay, I need to do this. I need to go into survival mode. I need to do this treatment so that I can kill this cancer. Just like you do that, you need to do that with your brain and your mind. I need to think that I'm going to live a normal life. I need to think that this has no possibility of coming back. Of course, of course, every once in a while, you're going to snap out of that. Everybody has hard days, rough days. It's fine. As long as you're not constantly, constantly thinking, I'm going to die. Like, that is no way to live. And if you think like that, you're not going to be able to remain sane. This is so much easier said than done. It takes a lot to, you know, get past those things, especially because they are so scary and they're so serious, especially if you have, you know, more people in your life that you're thinking about, like, how will this affect them? It's definitely something you have to work on. And if you need help, you know, go see somebody to help you with it. I can give you the things that I've done, but I'm not a therapist. So if you need that, then definitely seek that out. I thought that this video would be relevant right now because a week ago or so, at the time of me filming this at least, Nally passed away. She's another stage four breast cancer survivor, thriver. Um, when she passed away, it really hit Instagram. Like the cancer community on Instagram was just shook that day. Shaken, shaken is the word. <laughs> Unless you're talking about like the slang, like I was shook, but whatever. Anyway, 
my foot fell asleep. That is the last time that I have fallen into, you know, thinking about this kind of thing. It's when somebody that, you know, I followed a lot passes away or whenever I have a scan, I got sad that day. I actually found her on YouTube. Basically when I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 22 and everyone just kept telling me how rare that was. Like every doctor that I saw was shocked. People's faces turned white when they found out. And it was hard for me to find any information out there on the internet about somebody that was like me, that was my age that had specifically breast cancer. Because, you know, on Instagram, I followed some cancer accounts of people who were 22, 21, around 23, around my age. Most of them had a type of lymphoma because that is a more common cancer for that age group. Breast cancer is happening more and more in younger women, it's true, but still hasn't really made its way down to the lower 20s yet. So I was still not really finding anyone that you know was in my stage of life. But Nally was diagnosed when she was 24 and she was basically the closest that I found that I was able to go through her old videos on YouTube, see what she went through as a 24 year old. That's pretty close to 22. Um, and it really watching her videos made it feel like, you know, I can do this. She, she inspired me. She inspired me not only to make YouTube videos about what I was going through so that it could help anyone else that was in my situation because, you know, I looked, I couldn't really find much information and there she was with all of this information out there. But she also inspired me to get through my treatment, um, showed me that like, you know, somebody in their early 20s can get through this and it's rare and it's hard, but it can happen. And honestly, at the end of the day, age isn't that significant when you're talking about cancer treatment. But it was nice to see someone else that was like closer to my stage of life. Um, most of the people, you know, were married with kids and here I was fresh out of college. I don't, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but I was looking for somebody like me. When I was diagnosed, I went searching on the internet to find somebody who was like me and she was the closest that I found. She was a lot older than me at the time that I found her, but her videos, when she had posted them, she was closer to my age. I will have a link to her social medias below because I'm not going to try to explain her story because I won't do it justice. But you know, like on that day when I found out, I, I thought, you know, I've been watching this girl for so long. This is a girl that's like me. What if this is me in a few years? You know, it's impossible for a thought like that not to go through your head. Or, you know, like the thought, why does she have to die, but I am living? Why did she get this reoccurrence of stage four more aggressive cancer? And I'm out here, you know, stopping my medicine and being NED for three years. If you are a cancer survivor and you haven't had thoughts like this, I am amazed and I also don't believe you. <laughs> the thing about it though, is that I just try not to dwell on those things. Like it's impossible to stop them from coming across my mind. Of course, I'm going to think them, but I can't spend a lot of time on it because like I said, it's no way to live. You can beat yourself up with questions like that, or you can take a step back and realize that we don't know everything. We don't know why things happen. It's not about trying to analyze who deserves this and who deserves that. That isn't up to us to decide as humans. <laughs> the fact is that I am here right now. So I better make the most of my life while I'm here, while I have the life. And it's not just because she's not here. It's because I am here. Whatever the reason is for why I'm here and why she's not here, it doesn't matter. I don't ever have to know what that reason is. Just be grateful for what you have and don't ask questions. And you know, obviously it's hard not to ask questions, but like 
if you think about it, the questions aren't helping anyone. You're never really gonna find out the answers to them. You just kind of have to trust, you know, that what is happening is happening for a reason. You have to know that you don't deserve anything. The other people don't deserve anything, but you are given this life. And you should make the most of that life that you have. And I realize that can be a lot of pressure on some people. They feel like, oh my gosh, like what if I'm not out there inspiring people? You don't have to do that. You just have to get what you are supposed to get out of life. That is different for everyone. There are different things that people are good at. There are different things that people are supposed to be doing with their life. Your job is to figure out what that is and to do it. It doesn't have to be some big grand public thing. It just has to be you getting the most out of your life and living it. I, I'm not the best with words. Sometimes I can't put into words exactly what I'm thinking. I hope that this somewhat makes sense. This is something that, you know, I've been applying to different things of my life for as long as I can remember. You know, whenever something unfair happens, it's usually when it's something that happens to somebody else, not myself. You you just have to sit back and you just have to think, you know, things will work out. It's up to you to make the most out of what you've got, to be grateful for it. But it's not up to you to decide who lives and who dies and who deserves what. It's not your decision. You just have to, you know, live, be kind to others, you know, you know what you're supposed to do. Just do it. <laughs> Anyone who deals with survivor's guilt on a regular basis, I feel for you and I hope it gets better. If you have any tips for anyone going through this, please leave them in the comments. I think that there are a lot of people who get a lot of value out of the comments. Every once in a while I'll see somebody says something and they're like, oh wow, this helped me. The more popular this channel gets, the more people are going to criticize me and the things that I say. And I don't really care about the criticism itself um, because, you know, I've dealt with it before. But I do want to make sure that what I'm saying is coming across correctly. When I get a comment that's criticizing me, I sometimes take it personally like, oh, I did a bad job explaining that. And that's why this person thinks that. I guess what I'm trying to say is I just want to say thank you to the people who understand what I'm saying all the time and get where I'm coming from because sometimes I do a bad job of explaining things and I hope that this video made sense. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're interested in more of my cancer journey, please check out my other videos and subscribe to know when I post new videos. I've also got a vlog channel with my husband Gray where we, you know, couples channel, whatever, if you're interested in that and my life because we are going to be moving to Alaska soon. It's going to be really cool. We have started posting a lot more videos there, so feel free to check that out too. The link to that channel will be in the description and it'll also be on the screen. You can click on it and you can go subscribe and check out those videos too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I already said that. Yeah, that's all, bye.